down any busy high street in any town or city centre looking for a greetings card to mark a special occasion and the choice is overwhelming. There seems to be a card available for just about every event you can think of. However, lovely as these offerings may be, picking one that is perfect for a particular person can be surprisingly difficult. This is one area of 21st century life that isn't necessarily an improvement and many people are turning to more traditional skills to create their own greetings cards with delightful results. Age-old techniques such as cross-stitch, watercolour painting, collage and decoupage are being given a new contemporary twist and once bitten by the card-making bug, you're certain to be hooked. Whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced craftsperson, this programme is packed with ideas for creating beautiful cards which will thrill anyone who receives them. But be warned, once you start making cards for high days, holidays and Christmas, your nearest and dearest will be waiting to see what you're going to come up with next. And what better motivation could any of us have than to rise to the challenge? And hopefully this film will help you do just that. So, without further preamble, what do we actually need to get started? Well, in truth, a piece of card, an envelope and a black pen will do the trick. But there are a few items that make card creation a whole lot easier. A solid cutting board, straight edge, craft knife, scissors, tweezers, good quality drawing pencils, eraser, masking tape and clear drying glue are relatively inexpensive and make all the difference to the finished result. If you visit any arts and crafts shop, whether a large hobbyist superstore or a smaller specialist outlet, you'll find a whole range of products ready prepared, just waiting for you to add the inspiration. Pre-cut cards and envelopes come in a variety of shapes and sizes, although you will pay extra for the convenience. It can be far more economical as you gain in confidence and experience to cut your own cards, but the ready prepared variety are a great place to start. Also, some of the card designs you'll see demonstrated are quite 3D and not suitable for presentation in an envelope so a card box might be needed and it's far easier to start with the ready-made box and cut your card to fit it. Despite the fact that this all sounds distinctly uncreative, it is important. If you want your card to have a professional looking finish, lines must be straight and cut and folded with precision. There's nothing worse than a fine piece of artwork ruined by poor presentation, just for the lack of planning. Also, beautiful cards can be spoiled by poor lettering. If you want to put words on your card, it should never be as an afterthought. Plan your design with the words incorporated and if you're not confident with a calligraphy pen, opt for the many stickers and stamps that are readily available. As we consider different card designs, we'll look in a little more detail at lettering, but the rule of thumb really must be to have it prepared before you start. Now it's time for the fun bit as we get creative. There are 10 different card making techniques demonstrated here and even if you've never drawn, painted or used fabrics in your life before, 
you'll find this easy to follow guide simple and straightforward. All the styles are completely adaptable for any purpose, ranging from Happy Valentine's Day to commiserations on failing another driving test. The scope is literally as limitless as your imagination. The first style of card which you will see demonstrated has been created with decoupage and if you're looking for a card with a wow factor then this is most definitely it. What's more, if you have absolutely zero drawing skills but a good eye for composition you can still excel with this art form. Despite its very fancy sounding name, decoupage was also known as poor man's art when it was at the height of its popularity in the 18th and 19th centuries. The rich and famous of the day favoured hand-painted furniture and artefacts, but those who couldn't afford such finery cut out pictures to paste on to their own belongings, which were then varnished or lacquered to look as if they had been painted. All of these greetings cards have been made using this basic principle. You can use a single image to create a flat effect. However, by building up that same image with lots of layers, you can achieve this incredible 3D finish. What you will need to do this first and foremost is scissors and you may find having two different sizes helpful. Larger scissors are perfect for cutting a rough shape but if you keep a really sharp smaller pair for the fine details you'll find things a lot easier. And of course if you prefer to use a craft knife that's absolutely fine. Now, before you can do this, you need to source pictures to cut out. Many people use ordinary wrapping paper, as an image is frequently repeated on each sheet. Postcards can be lovely too, and naturally you can buy as many as you like to create your layers, which must be identical. The art and craft shop sell special paper and cards for decoupage and there are some lovely designs available, often with a theme. This is where you can have a great time with decoupage because you can design your card with the interests of the recipient in mind. And never fear, should your loved ones have more obscure hobbies that the craft shops don't cater for, find their favourite specialist magazine to source your pictures. It's amazing, even chainsaws and farm machinery can make an attractive card and you'll certainly struggle to find those in the high street shops. Once you've chosen your card and cut out your images, the next thing is to put the picture together. For a standard card to go in an envelope and have a chance of surviving the postal system, three layers will be ideal. But for a really professional look, five layers will give you more scope, which is fine if you can hand deliver it. Think about varying the parts of the image that you cut out, because this way you can really accentuate a particular part of the picture. There are two things that are key to producing a good finish with decoupage. One is cutting, which must be precise, and the second is the sticking, when the devil truly is in the detail. Choose a good clear drying glue that won't react with the paper and make it crinkle as it dries. Just one word of warning, mentioning no names, some glues that dry clear will discolour and go brown over time. 
if the card is for a wedding or perhaps a new baby that the recipient will want to keep. This would be very disappointing, so select your glue with care. Even if the glue has a nozzle, don't risk applying it directly to your design. Squeeze a small amount out and use a cocktail stick to spot the glue and fix your layers with perfect accuracy. As you can see here in close-up, it's well worth the effort. Our next card making category can be generically titled stickers and stamps but for anyone conjuring up images of preschool playgroups and potato printing, please think again. If you go to any craft shop or even one of the huge art and craft fairs that take place around the country, you'll see an abundance of stickers and stamps. In their simplest form, they can very quickly be used to produce multiple images in a whole range of colours. This is absolutely ideal for younger card makers who will be delighted at what they can produce. Yet for those keen to create unique designs, stamps should definitely not be overlooked. This beautiful card was actually created by a stamp. In the first instance, it was printed onto card and then cut out with the same precision that was used with decoupage. The green colouring and gold detailing was created simply with felt pen and the result is classically elegant. Again, little drawing skill is required but the finished card certainly suggests otherwise. The final stage is to carefully stick the image to the greetings card and that's all there is to it. Should your artistic abilities be a little more developed, rather than using felt pens, why not try coloured inks to enhance a stamped image? You really can get some lovely stamps and adding your own personal touch will make your cards all the more special. If this is a technique that appeals, you can think about creating your own stamps. You can do this as easily as gouging out areas of a polystyrene tile with a ballpoint pen, remembering of course that what you leave untouched will print and your design will be the colour of the card, rather like a photographic negative. To take this a step further, you can advance to lino printing, which is ideal if you want to create a number of cards that are the same. The word stickers again has a rather young image and this is fine. If you're encouraging children to make cards, they can be a great place to start. However, what you define as a sticker is open to debate. This card is being created with a ready-made image that could loosely be defined as a sticker. 
The reason I say loosely is because you need to provide your own glue. But as you see, the principle is exactly the same. The watchword here is uncluttered if you want a stylish result. Nevertheless, you'll be amazed at what you can find in the craft shops of a self-adhesive nature. These lovely ribbons combined with this oriental fan make a lovely card, simply created with stickers. Our next cards are very straightforward to produce, yet are some of the most effective you will ever see. The sharp scissors and good craft knife will really come into their own, as each offering has been made using various cutting and sticking techniques. Choosing contrasting colours will give you very dramatic results, and this black and white card certainly proves the point. Draw out your design on the inside of the front face of the card, as any pencil guidelines will be covered by the contrasting colour. Keep your design simple and clearly cuttable. You will need to be accurate with adding the contrast, as it needs to look neat and tidy when the card is opened. The papers and cards you use can be as varied as you like, and at Christmas time using shining, glittering or metallic finishes will be very festive. If you'd like to cut a few corners, apologies for the pun, the art and craft shops have some wonderful gadgets on offer. This specially designed cutter comes in a range of styles and you can decorate the actual card you are working on as well as creating stick-on effects. This one actually came with a circle cutter so you can be even more accurate. However, if you want to make life even easier, paper doilies will give you the same finish and come in gold and silver as well as the traditional white. Now, Here's another idea using different colour layers of paper. All you'll require is a needle, not too fine, a 2H pencil, good quality eraser and an embroidery frame, or failing that, a suitably sized kitchen container. Choose a design with moving lines. Simple swirls will be very effective. Keep your pencil marks as light as possible so as to minimise rubbing out. Then attach the paper across the frame or container with masking tape and use the needle to prick out your pattern. This can make a lovely edge for a picture and if your drawing skills are up to it, you can pick up the theme with the pin pricking. So far we've been cutting out to create an image, but it is possible to add rather than take away. Basic paper sculpture will produce some lovely images and gentle curling with the blade of your scissors will certainly create movement. However, just as with decoupage, you do need to think about delivering your card and this is one style that won't withstand the rigours of the postal system. You can take this a step further when you are hand delivering a card by breaking free from the constraints of the folded page. This cone-based Father Christmas card is so simple to make and can double up as a place setting for your Christmas dinner guests or hang on the Christmas tree ready for holiday visitors. Begin by cutting a circle and snipping along half the diameter. Then pull the sides around until you have the shape of cone you require. You can keep your design very simple or go to town with the paper curling. Cotton wool can be stuck on for the fur and Santa's hair and beard can be created with paper curling. 
By adding arms, he can hold a Christmas gift, which of course carries your message. This design can be adapted to any character you like for any season of the year. If you're looking for a humorous card, there are always plenty of cartoon styles available. But nevertheless, it's great fun to make your own. This way you can personalise the cartoon and select a joke that's sure to entertain the recipient. For those of you uncertain about drawing, Worry not, because a few simple guidelines will have you creating cartoons with confidence. Firstly, select your materials. A good smooth cartridge paper will work well, and if you go wrong, you won't spoil your more expensive card. Cards that are cut out as frames are lovely for cartoons and do give a very professional finish. It's a good idea to choose your card and then size your design accordingly. A fine H pencil, eraser, drawing pens and scrap paper are also essential. This is one card where you will need to try out a rough sketch first and put some careful thought into the design. Keeping a cartoon simple is vital. A single line is always best. If you're using a human figure, try to think in these proportions that are really just one step up from stick man drawing. By using ovals and breaking the body up in this way, you have a good framework. Oversize the eyes and always use a highlight. It worked for Walt Disney and it will work for you. A small semicircle is all you need for a nose, with an upturned larger semicircle for the mouth. Ears, again more semicircles, start just below the eyes, and the hairstyle can be whatever you choose. You can make your character male or female, and a smaller body will allow you to create a child. Many cartoon cards that you buy have words or thoughts in speech bubbles and when you know how, they are very easy to produce. Don't try to put in too many words. Keep it simple and always use capital letters. Check the words are spelt correctly and even if it seems fiddly, draw guidelines again as lightly as possible so they can be rubbed out without smudges. Use a central vertical line to place your letters in pencil first. Count the letters and spaces to centre your words accurately. This way you won't have to decrease the size of the words to fit them in. The same principle applies to any lettering you want to do and if you're feeling a bit more daring, do try a calligraphy pen for a really professional finish. As long as you remember to always point the nib at a 45 degree angle to the top left hand corner, you can't go wrong. Now, whatever you choose as a cartoon, you will need to mark it out in pencil first. And here's a fab tip for when you finish it off in pen. Work down your image from the top left hand corner to avoid smudges. And if you need to go back over something, just pop a tissue over your work to protect it. Here are a few really simple cartoon designs that are very easy to replicate. The flower in a pot is wonderful with just a few lines and of course is suitable for every occasion. And you can add colour or not as you choose. Cats 
are delightful to create and by using simple blocks of colour you can add extra character. Dogs can be drawn in similar fashion and the same face shape with the addition of long ears and teeth will give you the perfect Easter bunny. And for the easiest cartoon bunny of them all, this is unbeatable, especially as sticking on a bobble tail is guaranteed to raise a smile. Our next section of card making looks at cross stitch as a means of decoration. For many people, especially those of us old enough to remember domestic science lessons from our school days, memories of stitching holy fabric into such now obsolete items as tray cloths and needle cases will forever haunt us. However, for the modern card maker, it should definitely not be overlooked. Now, if you really can't face the prospect of stitching, don't worry, any good craft shop will sell ready-made cross-stitch pictures for you to use. As you can see for yourself, it's just a case of selecting an appropriate card and gluing your piece of cross-stitch into place. These cards, which are specially designed to hold inserted images, are ideal and the finished result is lovely. Having gained a little confidence, you might decide to tackle a small kit and stitch a picture of your own. The choice, as you can see in this shop, is somewhat overwhelming. Beware of being over-ambitious, because cross-stitch can be quite complex at more advanced levels and time-consuming, to say the least. Most packs are graded easy, moderate or hard, and particularly at Christmas time, you can find plenty of small cross-stitch kits, ideal for cards or mini frames, to give as gifts. This delightful Christmas pudding kit is typical and contains the fabric, known as Ada, pattern to follow, embroidery thread, known as floss, and even the needle to sew with. For something this tiny, you won't need an embroidery frame, so you can just thread your needle up and go. Following the pattern is quite straightforward with a colour and stitch key. If you're a beginner, basic cross stitch and back stitch will be quite enough to contend with and always do the edging back stitch last. By folding the fabric into quarters, you'll find the middle square to start counting from. Take extra care to ensure that the top cross stitch slopes in the same direction and generally speaking, the cross stitch will be done with a double thread whereas the back stitch outline and detailing will be done with a single thread. Flowers have always been regarded as the ultimate romantic gift and in the 21st century this age-old tradition tends to get very pricey around high days and holidays with St Valentine's Day and Mother's Day being prime examples. The Victorians were great bouquet givers and the lucky ladies who received them often pressed the precious blooms to preserve them. 
Back then, of course, there were no ready-made cards and the dried flowers were perfect to adorn messages to loved ones. And just as with decoupage, a whole new art form flourished. For card makers today, dried flowers are a valuable resource and you can certainly buy plenty of ready prepared flowers that you can use in any way you choose. This beautiful card has combined dried wild flowers with an unusual fabric. Although we've split this program into defined sections, don't think that you have to use just one technique per card. Mixing and matching is an absolute delight and the results can be remarkable. However, be careful when working with dried flowers as they are very delicate and rather expensive to buy in the craft shops. There is one easy solution to the problem though and that's to press your own flowers. With the ever-advancing technology of the internet, there are many households in possession of now obsolete sets of fine encyclopedias that seem far too good to throw away, but are, in point of fact, of no use whatsoever. Well, this is recycling to be proud of because they make the perfect flower press. Along with heavy books, kitchen paper and your chosen specimens, you do also need to find a spot where the encyclopedias can remain undisturbed. It's a process that does require at least a couple of weeks and preferably longer. They might be squashed flat sooner, but you want to remove as much moisture as possible for a good result. Some flowers press better than others, with smaller specimens being particularly good. A large multi-petaled bloom like a rose or chrysanthemum will take a lot longer. But once you've put it between your pages, all you have to do is wait. Wildflowers are of course free and walking through the countryside to pick them is lovely. But do remember, some species are protected by law. Leaves, ferns and grasses can also make spectacular cards when pressed and if you can find them as the colours become rich in autumn, the finished product will be lovely. When you have your specimen, gently place it between the sheets of kitchen roll and tuck it into one of your books. Always put a clearly labelled marker so you don't have to disturb everything to find what you want and keep a list of what you have for reference. Whether you dry your own flowers or buy them ready prepared from the craft shop, the cards you can produce will be well received wherever you send them. And don't forget, this is a great way to get younger card makers creating masterpieces. There are times when you want to come up with a card that's more edgy and contemporary than those techniques we've been looking at so far, and collage is perfect for such circumstances. 
The scope is literally as wide as your imagination and, of course, the accessibility of materials. Once you get bitten by the card-making bug, you will undoubtedly become a hoarder of bits and pieces of every description, which is just as well because you can use pretty much anything in a collage. Texture is as important as image and you can build a card layer by layer and then either varnish or spray paint over the top if you wish. Fabric is wonderful for collage as you can really cut and fray the edges as well as contrasting the textures. Abstract ideas work beautifully and the addition of buttons and bows, for want of a better expression, can be adapted for any occasion. There are many ways in which paper can be used for collage and at its simplest level, cutting small squares of different coloured paper to use in a mosaic finish can be very effective, especially if you have a recipient with an interest in ancient history. However, this may be a little regimented if it's free expression you're after, but if you prefer, tear your paper or pick out your colours from magazines to glue into place more haphazardly. Think in terms of blocks of colour to give depth and shape, but do be careful not to overcomplicate your design. Sometimes an event occurs that a card maker has the opportunity to commemorate for all time. Take the birth of a new baby when cards are very special and often treasured as part of the family album. By selecting newspapers and magazines of the baby's birthday, you can create a collage that reflects the happy events of the time. It's lovely to record for the future and make sure you include such details as popular music, sporting events, blockbuster films and fashion trends. You can of course add pink or blue items to your collage if you want to be traditional and a finishing spray of gold can always add a hint of sparkle. There are literally no constraints on what you can use in a collage so let your imagination run riot and use this technique when you want to really personalise a card. This next section of our programme is entitled Painting and Drawing. And even if this is something you don't consider yourself to be good at, please give these techniques a try. Now, everyone has seen beautiful watercolour paintings in art shops and galleries that literally take years of practice to achieve, yet card makers can emulate the effect very simply. Firstly, you must have the right materials, namely a good heavyweight watercolour paper, a paintbrush that will hold a point, watercolour paint, either a box or tubes, a board and some masking tape. Watercolour paintings are usually finely mounted and you can of course use a pre-cut card to give this effect. Make sure you cut your watercolour paper bigger than the inside of the frame and then do something very strange. Soak the paper under the tap. Then firmly stretch the wet paper onto your board, securing with masking tape and very quickly add lines of colour with your brush horizontally across the paper adding more water if required to keep it flowing and blend your colours into each other. Using this technique you can create blue skies, beautiful sunsets or abstract images of everything from under the sea 
to outer space. Don't overwork the paper so that your painting stays fresh and light and then leave it to dry. By taking this extra care stretching the paper, the finished watercolour will dry beautifully and smoothly without any bobbling. It's best not to try and predict how your watercolour will come out. Just go with the flow, see what you get. Some will be fine as they are to mount in your cards, but you can add silhouettes when the painting is dry. The simple outline of a tree, mountains or even a city skyline can give the suggestion of a landscape very dramatically. You can see for yourself how professional the results are and although proper watercolour paper and paint is more expensive than other materials featured in this programme, a little will go an awful long way and you'll get a great many lovely cards for your money. When it comes to drawing, you will be able to be more precise and this simple card is one that everyone can produce. Ideal as a get well soon card, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, or perfect to say thank you to a teacher at the end of term, it's very easy to make with a few simple guidelines. You can draw straight onto your chosen card or if you prefer, on more textured watercolour paper. A fine drawing pencil, eraser and good quality colouring pencils will be all you require. And although we're not using water on this occasion, again, use masking tape to secure your paper or card to your board. Draw the simplest of outlines, remembering that an apple is spherical. You need to leave a highlight on the paper and build up colour from light to dark. Don't forget this one simple rule. It's easy to add more, but much more difficult to take away. It's great to have an apple in front of you so that you can draw from life. Crosshatching is also really easy to do, rather than childlike colouring in in one direction, and you can mix and blend tones with ease, crisscrossing your lines with precision. Once you've mastered the apple, you can move on to other simple objects that appeal to you, creating a range of cards for every occasion. We've already used fabric to great effect in our collage section, but this next pair of cards uses fabrics and simple sewing techniques to give some very different finishes. Patchwork is delightful to do and growing rapidly in popularity, not least because you can produce great results with odd scraps of material and minimal sewing skills. Many people use ready-made templates to cut papers that are not too stiff before then stitching their chosen fabric around them. If you want specific colours, most good craft shops sell patchwork bundles and the remnant bins can be a very good place to source fabric. Once the preparations are complete, the shapes can be stitched together edge to edge and if it's done on the wrong side you won't see the threads. You can go freehand if you prefer but if not the next stage is to remove the papers and stitch the patchwork to a backing which can also be quilted if that is the desired effect. However, to use patchwork for cards, generally speaking, you will need to work in miniature, which is a little fiddly, but stick with it. And rather than hiding the stitches, it can be interesting to let them show. This patchwork card was made with squares cut out of graph paper, covered in material and then stitched onto a background fabric of Ada, which was featured in our cross-stitch section. 
A small amount of padding, as used by quilters, has been sandwiched in between to give texture, resulting in a very tactile quality. By using a rough stitching technique and allowing a degree of fraying, the card is given extra character and would be suitable for any occasion you can think of. Applique uses a similar technique, but rather than making an entire image out of sewn together pieces of patchwork material, you cut a shape out of one fabric and stitch it on to another. With larger items, machine stitched applique is fine, but with something this small, hand stitching does give you great precision. Again, make yourself a paper pattern and use it to cut out your shape from your fabric. You can leave your edge to fray if you like the effect, or hem it if you prefer a smoother finish. For this heart applique, a small amount of padding has again been used to give a very luxurious result, ideal for St Valentine's Day or a special anniversary. A second row of quilting stitches adds extra texture, but is of course completely optional. For card making, it's best to keep applique as simple as possible, because you are likely to be working quite small scale, but in truth, this only adds to the charm. Sadly, our time looking at making greetings cards is rapidly drawing to a close, but we just have a few minutes left to look at some ideas for introducing children to card making. Many of the designs we've already looked at can easily be handled by younger card makers. Preschoolers will get a great deal out of stickers and stamps and you can be sure that grandparents will treasure any creation handmade by their grandchildren. Also, paper sculpture can be simplified for all levels, as can cartoons. And to be absolutely honest, the uninhibited creative imaginations of younger artists can result in collages of the very highest standard. However, there are just a few pointers that you, as the grown-up, can give that will help your children get fabulous results for their efforts. Firstly, prepare carefully. Particularly between the ages of four and eight, children have a fairly short concentration span, but while they're concentrating, it can be quite intense. If you waste that time cutting cards and locating materials, the moment will pass. Make sure that all they need to do is the artwork, which will give them a tremendous sense of achievement when they see the finished result. Have plenty of card that you can fold rather than more expensive ready-made ones. Also, children's cards rarely need envelopes, but if you use A4 card to fold, an A5 envelope will easily accommodate any masterpiece. The savings you make in card can be wisely spent buying decent art materials. Providing children with good pencils and artists' quality pens will thrill them and give them great pride in what they do. Also, as adults, we would find it hard to produce something presentable with frizzy nibbed felt pens and thick wax crayons. And it's no different for children doing art. Equally, for not an awful lot more money, you will have art materials that will last and you can keep a box of everything needed for card making tucked away for future occasions. The cards being featured here are all designed around the card being an interesting shape. 
as the supervising grown-up, you can cut the cards before the children are ready to begin, using a sharp craft knife or scissors to get a good finish. Plastic kiddie scissors will never achieve this, and you don't want trips to the accident unit before you've even started. This first card is cut in the shape of a Christmas tree and the design is wide enough at the top to keep the two halves together and straight along the bottom so it can stand up. You can adapt any design you like but you must keep it workable where the card is folded and practical in the standing up department. A Christmas tree is perfectly symmetrical for design purposes and you can make yourself a template by folding a piece of paper and drawing out half the design. When you open it out, place the top on the fold of the card, draw around it and cut it out. A black marker line around the edges can be very pleasing and then it's ready to give to the children. Provide them with a wide range of materials to get creative with and sit back and watch what happens. Now it's time for a little simple geometry and all you'll need is a pile of A4 card, pencil, eraser, marker pen, compass, ruler and of course sharp implements for cutting out. These cards would make wonderful Mother's Day or Father's Day cards which is very useful to know for children everywhere. They have been created using a simple hexagon made from a circle. Set a radius for your compass of 7.5 centimetres and draw a circle. When complete, making sure that you maintain that 7.5 radius, put your compass point at the top of your circle and then draw an arc. Move right around your circle doing this until you have six marked points. Then, with your ruler and pencil, join the points to create the perfect hexagon. Cut it out and you have your template ready to go. Fold a piece of A4 card and place on the template. Draw around and cut it out. This first design will give a child who likes colouring in a beautiful card that looks like a stained glass window. And for older artists, it can be painted or collaged. The black lines have been drawn, joining each point of the hexagon, with additional lines drawn from the centre point of each edge. As an alternative, this lovely flower card has been created by drawing a smaller circle, again with the compass, in the centre and petals drawn to each point of the hexagon. A variety of art materials on offer again will mean that every child can come up with their own unique card to give to a special person. And on that very happy note, we really have come to the end of this programme. We truly have come full circle because we started with the premise of producing greetings cards that were absolutely unique and that's precisely what we've done. Hopefully you will be ready to give greetings card making a try and maybe you'll have even been inspired to come up with some great card making ideas of your own. Just remember, next time you want to send a special message, don't head for the card shop. Get out your art and craft box of tricks and start creating. You never know what 
you might be capable of. <laughs>